Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio, and in this brand new beginner friendly tutorial series, we're going to be creating an action RPG in Unity. We're aiming to be beginner friendly, but without wasting your time, so we'll have clear explanations, but try to get it across quickly and help you build a game with a lot of depth. In this first video, we're going to set up your game and get your player moving around. Let's get started. For this series, I'll be using the Tiny Swords Asset Pack from itch.io. This one's made by Pixel Frog and is absolutely free. And one of the great things is that this is under the Creative Commons Zero license, meaning you can use it for your project even if you want to do a commercial game. So we're going to start by creating a brand new project in Unity Hub. For this one, we're going to use the 2D built-in render pipeline. And the reason we're using this is that later on, it'll give us the option to add cool particles and lighting effects without having to do a lot of add-on packages. I'm going to call this one RPG, and we can get this thing started. Now, when we first get into Unity, there's not a whole lot we can do right away as we don't have any assets yet. So I'm just going to go into my downloads folder, open up the tiny source asset pack. And if you want to follow along with me, I'm going to be using the warrior and specifically a blue one. We're going to want to grab the PNG file and to add assets, you can literally just drag and drop them right into your Unity assets folder. Now, before we go any further, I'm just going to add a little organization. So we can right click in the assets folder, go to create folder, and we're going to call this first one scenes. We can put RPG right into there. I'm then just going to create one more folder. We'll call this one sprites, and I'll put warrior blue inside of that one. Now, from here, we've just got a little bit of work to do. If we click on warrior blue, you can see that we've got an entire sprite sheet here. And yet when we click on it, there's only one picture associated with this. We've got a little bit of work to do with this sprite. However, we can't actually access everything we need just yet. So what we're going to need to do is head up to window, go to the package manager. Now inside here, we want to not be in our current project files. Instead, we want to click on the Unity registry so we can add some new packages. Here we just want to click on 2D and go to install. This will give us all sorts of great extras like the tile map editor as well as the 2D sprite editor. Once that installation is complete, we can click on our warrior sprite one more time. And now over here in the inspector, we can take this sprite sheet and actually break it into other files. To do that, we're going to change the sprite mode from single to multiple. And we can now apply those changes and go to our sprite editor. Now at the moment, these are all one file. So what we want to do is click on slice. And instead of automatic, we're going to go to cell size. Now each sprite on this sheet is actually 192 pixels wide and tall. So we're just going to put those in. With that done, we can click slice and apply those changes. With that done, you'll now see that we've got many different warrior sprites. And I'm just going to drag the first one up here into my game. If I zoom in, you'll notice that he's a little bit blurry. And also when I go to game view, he's not quite sized quite the way we want him just yet. Now before we do anything else, I'm just going to go to the transform component and set the position to 0 and 0 as sometimes strange numbers can get put in there. All right, a little bit more setup, clicking on the parent object here. First thing we want to do is set our reference pixel size. This will make him the right size in game, but also help us to keep a consistent style where all our pixels are always the same size. If I click on my grid here, you can see now that roughly all of his 64 pixels fit within one of these grid squares. All right. Next up, we're going to take a look at getting rid of this blurriness. This can be done through our filter mode here. We want to go with point no filter and apply that change. Now he's looking a little sharper. Finally, there may be a little discoloration that you're noticing. And if we click on format and change it to 32 bit, we can apply those changes and it will just clean up that color stuff a little bit. All right, we've now got our sprite in and we're ready to actually make him do something. At this point, I'm just going to rename this character to be player and there's a couple of components we're going to add at the moment he's just a sprite in the scene we'll begin by adding a capsule collider which you can edit with this button here i'm just going to move this hitbox so that it covers the player but we don't necessarily want his sword or plumage bumping into things at this point we're going to add one more component this will be a rigid body 2d make sure that you do get the 2d version now i'm just going to add this other character for a second as a reference and we'll just stick a collider on him and let's go with the box one. Now when I test, you can see that adding the rigid body in physics gave gravity to my character. Also, I'm just going to demonstrate how this works a little bit here. If I move the player a little bit, you'll see that he's got gravity, but also that when we drag him to the edge, he can actually fall off the edge of the player and do some weird rotation. 
we definitely want to get rid of the gravity and that rotation thing. So to fix those issues, we're just going to go to the rigid body and first of all, take his gravity off by giving him a gravity scale of zero. We're also going to go into constraints and freeze his rotation. Now he won't get any weird spinny stuff going on. All right at this point, I think we're ready to get some scripting going and get this player moving. So we're just going to right click down in our assets folder, go to create folder, and we're going to call this one scripts. Then inside that folder, we can create a C sharp script. I'm going to call this one player movement. We can double click that to open it. All right, so to start, we're just going to come up above the start and update methods as we want to create a couple of variables. The first one we're going to make is going to be a public float called speed, and we're going to initialize this to five. This will be how fast our player moves. Now, in order to apply this speed, we need to talk to our rigid body as that's what handles all of our physics. So we'll make a public rigid body 2D reference, which we'll call RB. Now, if we save our code, we can already come back into Unity where we can click on our player game object, we can add in the player movement component. You'll see that our speed is there now as five since we made it public. And you can also see our rigid body. At the moment, it doesn't know which rigid body to talk to. So we can just grab the player's rigid body and drag it into that box. Our script now knows which rigid body to talk to and how fast we want to move. At this point, we can actually get rid of our start method as we're not going to need it just yet, and it'll help keep our code looking a little cleaner. So at this point, what we want to do is find out if the player is pushing a button on the horizontal or vertical axis. To do this, we'll come in down into update. Here, we're going to make a new float, which is a decimal value, which we'll call horizontal. And it's just going to store the value of our input along the horizontal axis. Now spelling and capitalization is important here. When we type in get axis horizontal, what we're actually doing is looking in Unity's input manager. And then in input manager, there's this entry here called horizontal, which just looks at the left and right keys or A and D. You can change those mappings if you want, but those are the default ones. So now if we are pushing left or right, it's gonna store that value in this variable now we'll actually just create the exact same thing for vertical, only this time our float will be called vertical and we'll be checking the vertical axis. Now that we've stored the horizontal and vertical values, we can actually apply them. We're gonna do that by telling our rigid body that its velocity is going to be equal to a new vector two. This vector two is gonna be equal to, on the x axis, it will be our horizontal input and on the y, it'll be our vertical. Now at this point, you can go ahead and save your game and we can actually test it out already. If we go into play mode, you can push your button and our player will now move up, down, left, right, depending on what you're pressing. We'll just notice that he's moving very slowly. So the reason for the slowness is that right now he's just moving at a speed of one. And so we're just gonna multiply our vector times speed. So now both the X and Y axes will be multiplied by our speed, which we've defaulted to five. We're just gonna make one little tweak while we're here. And that is that we're gonna change update to fixed update. Fixed update runs 50 times per second rather than once per frame, and is just a little bit more reliable for physics calculations as it can be counted on to run at an exact speed rather than a variable frame rate. You can save your game, and now when we get into Unity, we can move around at a much more pleasant speed. And you can change that speed in the inspector to try out different numbers and see what works best for you. Obviously, we've still got some work to do in terms of animation and flipping our player, but we'll get there in the next video. Until then, I hope you found this first video helpful. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.